everyone, welcome to God's Plan, Your Part, Year 2, where this year we're reading through and studying the entire New Testament, one chapter at a time. Thanks again for joining us in discovering God's plan and your part in it. Today we are starting the book of Colossians. We just wrapped up Philippians, now we're moving into Colossians. This is a short book. It has only four chapters, I believe. Uh, so we'll be through here pretty quickly just to give you a little bit of background on the book of the Colossians. Uh, this was written around the same time as Ephesians, uh, most likely around the same time as Philippians, around AD 62, give or take. They're actually kind of close to each other too, like gra- geographically speaking. They're like sort yeah. of in the same region. This letter is unique in that most likely uh, Paul is writing to a church that he heard about. And I think you can kind of feel that in the letter. Uh, most likely Paul was not the primary identity, like the, the primary teacher, speaker, person who delivered the gospel to a uh, Colossae. It was probably Epaphras who he talks about uh, in the letter. This is actually really interesting in that most likely Epaphras was going back and forth uh, from Colossae to Paul in uh, prison. And what this letter was, what, what was supposed to be done with this letter is that Paul wrote it, gave it to Epaphras. Epaphras was supposed to take it and represent Paul's words in the Colossian church and give encouragement to this Colossian church. And then he was supposed to also take it to Laodicea and read it to the Laodicean church. And they, they were pretty close together. And the, the problem that was happening, the issue that Paul's trying to address is that there is some false teaching that was happening uh, in the Colossian church. And we, we think by extension, also the Laodicean church. And there is some debate about what this false teaching teaching was. And there's a lot of opinions on that. Um, It looks like there were people that were questioning uh, the authority of Jesus, the um, the deity of Jesus, whether he was God or not. And it, I think because of like these challenges that they were facing and what Paul speaks to them, I think it's very applicable to us today because it's very likely uh, that people were teaching you don't need Jesus for salvation. It's very likely that people were teaching Jesus is just a good person and we can respect him as a good person, but we don't need him uh, to be our savior. It's also very possible that they were trying to teach some kind of like, well, worship Jesus, but keep doing what you were doing. So like, just welcome Jesus um, into your own personal pantheon of gods and continue trying to follow whatever you think is right. And that, that all three of those pieces, I think are very applicable to our world today, because there are still many people that believe variations of those things. So I think what's interesting is that like before we started reading, there was this little note in our Bible that said Colossae was most likely the smallest city to receive Mm -hmm. a letter from Paul. So they, to me, that even is interesting too. Like Paul is interested in believers, period. The significance of like the size of the church of believers does not phase him. Um, It's like just as worthy of his time to write a letter to these people to make sure that they are on track. So much so that he's aware of this church that he did not even start himself and truly cares for the work that um, Epaphras was doing or had started in this area. So I just think that's really cool. It's also another example of how Paul can or has worked with other people and is not thinking of his own interests. Like he's actually excited to encourage and help what is being started in Colossae. So I thought that was kind of cool too. It's also evidence that that pastors were seeking him out for his authority on situations. Like Epaphras was interested in getting Paul's take on these problems. Um, the other thing I mentioned at this is that this letter was expected to be read to the Laodicean church. Uh, the Laodicean church is mentioned in the book of Revelation. It's pretty famously one of those uh, seven churches that get a word from the Lord. And it's specifically, I mean, it's referenced in Revelation 1. It's also referenced in Revelation 3. Um, but in Revelation three fifteen, the Laodicean church is told, I know your works. You are neither hot nor cold. Would that you were either cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. For you say, I am rich, I have prospered, and I need nothing, not realizing that you are wretched, uh, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. So this is, I think, powerful context because like the the speaker in Revelation is Jesus himself saying, hey, um, you guys don't even care about me anymore because you've become so rich that you are distracted from me, which again, I think is wildly applicable to many of us today uh, that we have been blessed financially in many ways. We have been blessed with many things and it can distract us from how much we need Jesus. 
So I think, like, kind of going back, though, to what he is saying, like, in his initial opening. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's really interesting to me, too, that Paul kind of seems like this proud dad almost (laughs) like he tells them in the in verse nine from the day we heard like so essentially i would assume this is like from the day that we even heard that you guys are just as on fire and excited about Mm -hmm. what christ is doing in your lives and the area around you we have not stopped praying for you so i can imagine like again i always go to this like a missionary mindset where if i'm going off i've decided well not i our family has decided to go off into a place where Christians are not like Mm -hmm. super popular or Mm -hmm. they're not everywhere you look like it seems like it can be here. It would be so refreshing and so exciting to be like, oh, my word, did you know that like the next couple towns over, there's another church that's doing the exact same thing that we are. Mm -hmm. And that would be just so exciting to me. And I think Paul is also like just really excited for this church. But at the same time, you're going to see, and you're almost, I think you're kind of seeing this in this chapter too, but it will be more prominent throughout the other chapters that, hey, this is so great. We've been praying for you. This is so exciting that God is doing a work in you as well. Be careful. Like there's some things that are going to come up. Mm -hmm. There are things that are going to be like even happening right now. You got to really be careful of uh, because he's like, God has clearly called you to this mission. And we're so excited for that. We want to keep praying for that. But at the same time, there's going to be some things that I'm going to like essentially give you warning about, help you to see before it overcomes you, because there were problems that faced many of the different churches. And he's almost like giving a a fair warning beforehand. Uh, I think, I mean, you're quoting verse nine. And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. I think it's very powerful to note that that. Paul, in all of his letters, and I can say this confidently as we're walking through his letters, prayer is an essential piece to what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And I think that that short little verse here in Colossians 1.9 is a powerful reminder to all of us that that prayer is really meant to be a central part of who we are. Uh, It should be a central piece of how we support each other. And and many times it's just like, it's just not. Um, when When I was in seminary, um, I remember having a professor that made like constantly made a joke about how uh, Christians love to lie about praying. <laughs> and I mean, he was speaking to like a, a group of aspiring pastors and his encouragement was basically like, hey, guys, if don't ever. Pray. Yes. <laughs> if you're if you tell someone you're going to pray for them, make sure you actually pray for them. It's so easy to say just to be like, OK, you feel like you're being supported by me. <laughs> I feel like I'm supporting you. But if you don't actually put legs to it, like, yeah, it's so silly. Don't just use it as a like a nice sounding salutation. Like his his point was like, if you tell someone you're gonna be praying for them, just stop what you're doing and pray for them. Like, don't don't give them this empty assertion that you'll be praying. Just right. start praying. And I, I do think I mean, granted, I think we're like mining this out of here a little bit, but I think it's a very good encouragement for all of us to keep prayer central to who we are. Uh, and it, in Paul's day, it would have been very normal for Christians to understand that prayer is meant to be three times a day. Um, I, I think that is a positive thing for us to continue to follow, not in a legalistic sense, but just in a way to remember like, hey, start your day with prayer. Um, go back to God in prayer in the middle of the day and end your day with prayer because Because that is like key to who we are and what we're called to do. So let's continue to support each other with our prayers. It's not time for the your part yet, but I I think that's an excellent (laughs) your part. Well, the next part is is literally in our Bible says it's like this praise to Christ. So I see it as him initially starting out saying, I'm so thankful for you. Like it's, it's exciting to be a part of the same body. And then he almost flips it to... Christ is so amazing. This is what yeah. he's done for us. So awesome. Just like praise, praise, praise. And what he is talking about, how powerful, how incredible, how preeminent Jesus is, um, even more than just saying like, hey, Jesus is great. He's he's giving them like a theological understanding of who Jesus is and why he's important to everything that we're doing, because that is the that is what was under fire in that church. And so, like, yes, he's saying, like, incredible things about Jesus. But it's also a unifying thing, too. Yes. He's unifying them, like the churches themselves, with what he is also doing and others are doing as well. And remember, the context is most likely that people were saying, well, you know, like, Jesus was nice, but you don't have to have Jesus. Mm-hmm. There, there are other ways to honor God. And he's saying, no, there 
isn't because Jesus is God and Jesus was around um, before the very beginning. And just to make sure that you hear the Bible saying that, um, he's talking in verse 15, he is the image, talking about Jesus, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. And then he just goes on uh, in this incredible uh, work and, and statement about who Jesus is. This is important because even today, uh, there is a false teaching teaching out there that the early church kind of developed this idea that Jesus was God. And that came much later. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. people even say like in the second or third century, uh, that is clearly not true because this is a very early teaching about Christ. And Paul is clearly teaching that Jesus is God and was around before there was time and space and creation. Um, this was not something that was developed later on. This is something that Christians believed from the very beginning. And then I, I guess to kind of move forward to the end, he's talking to them about how um, he is referring to his sufferings for their sake. So I'm wondering, too, if he does feel this little bit of urgency of need for them in hopes that they will continue to mature. Uh, verse 28, it says, Him we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom, that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil, struggling with all his energy that he powerfully works within me. So again, he is not new to this. It, this is not like a, mm -hmm. a new problem for churches, but his desire ultimately sounds like discipleship and maturity. Mm -hmm. So I'm so thankful for you. I'm so glad Christ is doing this work in you. He's done so many good things. Don't stay stagnant, mm -hmm. like continue to grow and continue to be, um, I guess, a light that is worthy of shining into the darkness. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really cool that he emphasizes that discipleship piece and maturity piece again, maybe not so in your face, but he's addressing it. Mm -hmm. So I think a, a very clear your part. One, uh, make prayer central to who you are and what you do and how you do it. Um, two, this is not a cliche thing. Like we need to be regularly reminded about who Jesus is uh, for us, what he's done for us, uh, who and, and who he is. Like he was not just some good guy. He is not someone that you can just like hang out with but not worship. Like he is God and we cannot have right relationship with God outside of him. And, and unfortunately, and I, I can say this personally, like sometimes you just forget or, or like you just I don't know. Like it, it just get seems like you don't, yeah, you get distracted self. and you just don't think about Jesus that much. Uh, but just in our previous episode from Philippians four, we talked about like Jesus needs to be central to everything we do. And I love that the book of Colossians kicks off with that, that basic reminder that like keep Jesus at the center. Um, you cannot do your life the way you've been designed to do your life. If you don't have Jesus at the center. So my encouragement to you is one continue to pray for um, everyone. Actually, if you would like, like to please pray for us. We have we have a baby coming soon. We just talked about that in our previous episode, but we would we would love your prayers. We appreciate them very much. Um, and let's let's continue to support each other in prayer, and let's not forget that Jesus is at the center of our lives. Uh, he is why we do what we do. He is how we do what we do, and it is important never to take our eyes off of Him. So we'll be back again tomorrow with Colossians chapter two. We'll see you then. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the episode today and are enjoying God's plan your part, we would love it if you could help us in two ways. First, if you would give us a rating and review for our podcast, we would really appreciate that. And second, tell your friends, tell all your people that you rub shoulders with every day uh, to listen to the podcast and also give us ratings and reviews as well. That being said, here is the reading for today. Colossians chapter one, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and Timothy, our brother. To the saints and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Of this you have heard before in the word of truth, the gospel, which has come to you as indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and increasing, as it also does among you. Since the day you heard it and understood it, the grace of God in truth, just as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant, he is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf and has made known to us your love in the Spirit. And so, from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him 
bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. And you, who once were alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in the body of flesh by his death, in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. If indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God that was given to me for you, to make the word of God fully known the mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of the mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil, struggling with all his energy that he powerfully works within me. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of God's Plan, Your Part. Don't forget, you can find us on just about every social media platform and YouTube. Let us know what you thought of today's episode, and if you have any questions, go ahead and post them there. You can also reach out to us directly at godsplanyourpart at gmail.com. As always, if you don't have a Bible, or if you'd like to use the one that we use, uh, reach out to us via email, and we'll be happy to send one to you. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you again tomorrow.